When designing a mains powered product, you need to be extra careful on how to position your components and how to route your PCB. That is because the design will be exposed to high voltages. And if not designed correctly, this could cause issues such as arcing, could cause components to fail, and most importantly, is a safety hazard to the user. Take, for example, this 65 watt USB PD charger. You'll notice how some of the components are placed, and also you'll notice that there are slots in the PCB to comply with creepage rules. And for this design, I'll be using Altium's new constraint manager to show you how to define your clearance and creepage rules and how to make sure that they are working properly and to resolve any violations that flags. Also, I'll be sharing other tips and tricks that I've uh, learned as I've designed this, this board. Hello, I'm Sam Eldar. Altium recently released version 24, which includes a number of exciting new features. Amongst some of them is the new constraint manager. And this allows you to define rules and constraints in a table or matrix style form. This becomes very important in designs that operate at high voltages, where you have different set of rules, especially clearance rules, between all the net classes. Um, and in this design, we'll be using the new constraint manager to design a 65 watt USB PD charger. And this is how the final PCB looks like. I set myself a goal to make this design uh, slim and compact. So I'm constrained in the Z direction. Uh, I've got freedom in the X and Y direction. So far, this is 65 by 60 millimeters. So live and neutral comes in here. USB-C port is on the other side over here. And our isolation uh, barrier it runs along this path over, over here. And you'll notice I'm using a planar PCB transformer. I'll explain in a future video, video how I designed this transformer. If you have a quick look at the schematic, um, this is based. This is using a flyback topology, very common these days for these types of chargers. Just a quick overview: we've got our mains input coming here, filtering, uh, bridge rectifier, and then the uh, the main switching device on the primary side is uh, a GAN device, and specifically the Viper GAN 65 from SD Microelectronics. And on the secondary side, we've got a synchronous rectifier, and we've got our USB PD controller chip and an opto isolator to get the feedback signals across from the uh, secondary back to the primary. Now, this design is based on the reference design supplied by ST Microelectronics. Uh, the design is almost, the schematic is almost identical. I've just made a few changes on the secondary side, such as the uh, sync rectifier controller and the USB PD chip. Okay, so here I've got Altium open. I'm using version 24.1.2. So let's go ahead and start a new project. Make sure that you've got uh, constraint manager uh, checked here. Otherwise, if you don't, you'll be using the old uh, design rules. So let's go ahead and start a new project. And let's call it USB PD 65 watt flyback. And let's create it. And so when you add a new uh, schematic, you can you can access the constraint manager in two ways, either from the schematic or from the uh, PCB. In the schematic, uh, you can go under Design Constraint Manager and find it here at the moment. There's See, it's empty. You've got your clearances. You've got physical, which are generally related to things like uh, track widths and, and uh, BIA types and polygon connects. Um, and under this tab, is, it lists all your nets. At the moment, we haven't got any nets because we haven't got any components. So once we start adding uh, symbols to our schematic and creating nets, then all of them will start to appear here. Now, I've, I've already made my schematic. Um, I won't go through the details of how I, 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 drew, I drew this, but I'll just point out that you know I'd like to separate the key sections of the circuit. So on the top here, I've got my AC input and the bridge rectifier, and the output is uh, high voltage DC up to about 340 volts here. And then in the second section is the actual flyback transformer topology and its associated circuitry. And then the third section below here is just a USB-C connector. So first of all, let's start from the AC input here. Now the goal here is to, to define the net classes, um, which uh, each net class will operate at a certain voltage level. Um, so Previously in, in Altium, the way you would you would define a net class is there were multiple ways, but one of the common ways was is to use a directive. So when you, you you would use to go under place directive and you would put a parameter set here, uh, and then you would um, add your net class name here, like like so. So this will be AC Live. Now, unfortunately, this does not work with the new constraint manager. In fact, if you go to the uh, Altium documentation here, um, it does tell you that, um, unfortunately, uh, the changes will not be transferred 
um, across if we're using a parameter set. So what you need to do then is you'll have to add those manually using the constraint manager. So we can't use directives. Um, and um, so if I now open my design constraint manager, you'll see I've got all the nets um, that are listed here. Um, you, you would, uh, I've learned that good practice is to use uh, net labels on all the key nets. So try to label all of your nets properly, because if you don't, then you'll end up with um, obscure names, like this might be called F1-2. You would not know exactly which net belongs to which part of the circuit. By adding net labels, it, it makes it easier for you to uh, associate, it which, associate which nets need to be in which um, net classes. Okay, so now let's have a look at how to add nets to a net class. So let's take these three nets for example, AC live in, live one, live two. Now I know that all these three nets should have the same voltage on them because theoretically the fuse should have zero volts drop and same goes for the common mode choke. So if you go to our constraint manager tab here, which I had already opened, now I can select all these three nets. And just as I mentioned before, um, I can uh, if you label your nets, it'd be easier to find them on this list, especially if you've got um, so many of them. So make sure all of them are selected, right click, classes, add setup to class, new class, and we can call this AC Live, and just make sure that the nets, these ones are the correct nets that we want to add. That's one way of adding, uh, creating a new net class. And still I've got all these other nets uh, are still yet to be added to a net class. Now, this is one way of adding nets to a net class, but if you've got so many of them, then you'll have to uh, find them all here. It might be a bit cumbersome. A different way of doing it is um, if I close this without saving, um, is if we start the config manager again. So here are my net classes again. Um, a different way of creating a net class is you can simply select the nets of interest and then go to your constraint manager and you'll see Altium has highlighted the ones that you've selected, although for some reason here, it's only highlighting the index, but never mind. Let's do the same thing, classes, add to the two net class, new class, and AC live. That's the second way of adding nets to a net class. Okay, now if we follow the same process and add all our nets to the remaining to their net classes. Now, um, it's up to you as the designer or the engineer is to determine which nets belong to which net classes. Um, so in this specific design, I did my research and I realized I need uh, a net for the live, for the neutral, for the DC, uh, for the uh, for the drain node of the flyback uh, circuit, for the snubber, the voltage divider, the primary ground, and the secondary ground. And this is the end of this first video. In the next video, we'll be talking about clearance and creepage rules and how to define the clearance matrix.